Hi everybody, this is, I'm Nathan, I'm the managing director, and today we have two, what are you guys? Are you guys? Experts. Egg experts. Oh, we got egg two experts. We're experts. Okay, so we got two proud egg donors who have just completed their egg donations. Um, one as early as one week ago, and the other one as early as Oh, nine days ago. Two days. Yeah, nine days ago. Oh, we did two days. <laughs> two newly minted egg donors first time. Hi, how's it going? Whoever is just waving at us. Yeah. So first of all, I have a, I'm going to be the interviewer. So why did you become an egg donor? Um, what would you like to answer that? Okay, that's a lot. Um, I don't know. It was, it was quite an easy decision for me. <laughs> I mean, it's always been something I've been looking into. It's just, um, I'm really close with my family, and I think I have a really close knit, like, very, we're very close, yeah. And I wanted other people to have the same experience as I did, because I grew up really well with a very supportive and fun family, so I have a lot of fun I think it's pretty natural when you have the ability to help somebody that you just naturally want to help them, you know, so a lot of people ask why, and they think it's you know, like, it's like this crazy idea, and it's like, you know, when you have the ability to help somebody, it's, it's a pretty natural way to want to help them. Cool. So this is a natural segue to when you went for the egg retrieval, and this is anywhere between seven to... Nine almost, days. Not, sorry, nine, <laughs> correction. Nine to maybe even 13 days. This is you. fresh. <laughs> so, so um, who, was there a support person that you went with, and why do you need a support person? Who was your support person in seven and fourteen? Yeah. Okay. So I'll go through this and have this <laughs> So I brought my boyfriend with me, um, which is like not very for the parts. <laughs> um, and you need your support person because not only are you in like a strange city, you know, like about a week or so, you don't want to be alone in such a state of you just want to hang out with. After the procedure, your result. The, the way you're feeling can really vary, so you might be able to bounce back really quickly, like just stopping right after, or you know, you might need someone like to really help you, like, you know, at least for that first, like, initial 24 hours, and that was my case, at least with me, I'm kind of a win. So I needed my support for you, like, go and get me day ready, and go and get me fruits and stuff like that, or just, you know, at first I found it's not seen that. What if you don't have a boyfriend or a girlfriend? How about you? Who did you yeah. have? I don't know if you have a boyfriend or girlfriend, but... <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> Strange city, let's keep up that. What strange, <laughs> what strange city did you go to? It wasn't like Somalia. No, I went to Vancouver. You went to? I, I went to Okay, so not too strange. <laughs> it's strange to me, you know. I don't know how I went okay. to um, let's, It was a perfect segue to some of the aftermath. So we want to talk about this retrieval. And so what you start over there. Um, what was it like? Do you, after the retrieval, how did you feel like? Let, let's make sure if there's any other future egg donors out there, lay out the egg expectations. The egg expectations. <laughs> um, well, my retrieval went pretty well. Um, the only thing I had afterwards was a lot of nausea. Um, so I was vomiting quite a bit. Um, but, um, they got my electrolytes up and after that I was quite tired and yeah, stuff like that. I also have a little bit of bruising from when they put the IVs into me. What showed up? Show off your bruises. Be sexy. Be sexy. <laughs> oh! Look! Oh dear. Can we see it? Yeah. You can see it. So we're injecting bruises, right? 
Yeah, that's the model I think that's something I have to take. Is that me, Marcel? Uh, no. <laughs> this, is, this is PG. <laughs> yeah, right. No, I, so I, I did that. I'm really pale, as you can see. <laughs> and these kind of fake. So I bruise really easily. So every injector basically gave me a bruise. But besides that, like, they're pretty cool. Like, it's kind of more comfortable for 30 seconds, but whatever. Um, and as far as aftermath for me, I was like super sensitive to the sedation that they gave me because I went home and I went to the hotel home and I slept from like two o'clock in the afternoon like the next morning. <laughs> so super super exhausted for me. I was quite cramped and bloated. Um, I apparently am just a bloaty person because the entire process that was like my number one reaction to the night was getting bloated. And so after the retrieval, I was super bloated. So <laughs> it was very attractive. But just because of that, like, you know, kind of like, it's pretty uncomfortable. Like, everything just kind of feels like, you know, if you're and you're heavy and, like, got this massive belly on you out of nowhere. So, just like that. Or, like, I would say, like, as rough as it was, it was only rough for three days. And then on the fourth day, it was, like, a slip, just slip. And I was like, oh, I'm fine now. So, it was, like, pretty rough. And I was like, oh, my God, what is this? And then the slip flips and like, oh, I'm fine now. Which is where I'm at now. <laughs> it's like I feel. We like shouldn't have done the video of the day. Yeah, the no, day off. you would not have found us doing a video of the day after the table, sleeping and throwing up. And that's important for us to know. And this is a segue to what some of the recipients should know. So, uh, first of all, can you tell us um, when you signed up, were you open to doing anonymous or known donations, and did you end up doing a known or anonymous donation? I did known. I also did a known. Um, I was okay with both. It was completely mm -hmm. up to the intended parents for the one to do. Um, I think both are great options. I mean, <laughs> yeah, it's all up to the I originally signed up saying that I wanted to only be anonymous. And then after kind of like reflecting on it, I was like, you know, maybe like I am okay with being a known donor. It's kind of like a big deal you're on boundaries, right? Because this is a serious decision. Mm -hmm. So like talking with me and kind of figuring out, like, uh, you know, it's okay. I'm okay to be known for a donor who's like, you know, not in my own city, right? Like just figuring out my own personal boundaries with that. And then now having done this as a known donation, I don't think I could ever do it anonymous just because the support that you got from the recipients is so valuable and like just like their gratitude towards you and the thanks that they give you is like, I don't know, you just see the difference that you're making and the happiness that you can give them. And it's like, okay, I'm super bloated and my pants don't fit. But, like, you know, I'm making these people's dreams come true, and it just completely makes it worth it. So, exactly. 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 Yes. <laughs> what, an ex what an exquisite answer. Wow. Oh. Um, <laughs> okay, so I do want you to share with us a little bit. Like, okay, so some of the recipients can be people that have experienced infertility and they have done IVF and retrievals themselves. Some of them can be same sex couples, single males, gay males, or females, single males, you know, straight males. You know, so I want you to kind of synthesize a couple of points. If there are some intended parents out there who don't know about egg retrievals, what would you like them to actually know about this process that can help you feel more honored and acknowledged and validated? Acknowledged. Acknowledged. <laughs> Okay, I go. <laughs> um, I mean, um, yeah. <laughs> not good for the Yeah, you can Come back to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think you should just, you know, you are asking somebody to go through a procedure and you're asking them to go through weeks of hormones. And that is like no small feat. I think, you know, the reaction is very, you know, women to women. Then maybe some of the straps and like they grow in stride. Or maybe kind of like a baby, like I was. <laughs> But I think you should definitely look into the side effects, um, look into the actual procedure itself, just so that you know what you're asking this woman to get into for you. And like, you know, while we're all adults and we're making this decision independently, and you know, we all know what we're getting into. It just helps us feel more supported. If, if you mention a side effect to you, if you maybe check in on us and you say, how are you feeling? If you mention a side effect, you know, hopefully that doesn't like, surprise you. Like, oh, there's side effects? You know, it's nice if you come prepared just knowing what we're going through physically, because you just have to feel like, you know, we're just being more honored with mm -hmm. uh, Nathan says, you're not just a gumball machine. Yeah. You open up the dispenser, all these eggs are a gumball. Well, Chicken, <laughs> you know. Hot, hot, like, okay. But I guess really, I think a lot of intended parents want to learn, but they actually just don't know where to begin. And mm -hmm. for starters, like some of the intended parents or recipients have no idea that you do a lot of injections and you're comparing the number of injections. Yeah. Right? Oh, um, how many injections did you do in total over a, what course of time? Oh, 
can't even remember. <laughs> oh, like two weeks of injections, I think, as a round that. Uh, I only did about a week. Ooh. Um, <laughs> yeah, I had a lot less than she did. Yeah. I don't know what's wrong with me, but I need a lot of injections. Yeah. Um, and also a lot more hormones in the injection, so you can inject, like, you know, like, there's this one medication that you, you have to mix yourself and you kind of customize it, so if you have one bar on it, or, right? It just kind of depends. I mean, I think a good place to start for the IPs and the recipients, if you're feeling like, because the, like, the world of infertility and infertility medication is insane. It's a lot. Because um, we all went through it, right? And they prescribe us something, we're like, what the heck are we injecting? And that's a really good place to start, is to just Google the medication, go onto the medication's website, and look at those side effects, and just what to expect from that, because that's what I did. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's really what proud fertility is all about, just really honoring the person that's giving you this gift. I mean, it's not, I know that we were having a, a quick lunch today, but we were just saying it's not quite as much as what a surrogate is doing, but... Mm -hmm. Oh my I mean, god, surrogates. You guys, are, you, guys. you guys are amazing. <laughs> but at the same time, like, it, it, without without the bottom, without your eggs, there would be no embryos created. And then, so it's just a nice way to put the spotlight on, mm -hmm. um, on egg donors today. Yeah, and I think, you know, even though it's not nine months, or, you know, nine, ten months of going through something, even though it is just two weeks, you don't want to diminish that two weeks, because that is still a contribution. It is still, you know, an entire procedure to go through, right? It's still working a little bit of pain. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I feel yeah, like both of you are like, a little bit of pain. <laughs> Yeah. There was a lot of pain, oh. and, and donation results and pain level can vary from a different mm -hmm. donation. Did you guys think there would be as much pain as you thought there would be? Oh, sure. <laughs> How about you? Um, for me, it wasn't that bad. <laughs> it definitely wasn't as bad as hers. Um, <laughs> my, I think my body just reacts kind of funky to sedation, um, which is just like it's not something that you can expect. It's not something common. To happen either, mm -hmm. so mine was just a very weird freak reaction. Um, and even with all of that, the fact that you know, I, didn't, I was not sedated as a standard, it was still a manageable procedure. Um, I had the most amazing nurse in the world who just held my hand to it and like, got that for sure. You had a good nurse too, someone was holding your hand while you Yeah, she was asking me questions. I was getting my retrieval done and she calmed me down. Yeah. Like, I so like, I will remember that when I was, like for years and years. Like she was such an impact upon my like, was to me. And I'm like even with like, you know, how uncomfortable it was, like even when I left, I was like, okay, bye, I'll see you guys, I'll see you on the next one. Mm -hmm. Like it's still not it's not it wasn't so bad that I was like, I'll never do this again. Mm -hmm. It was just like, okay, well now I know that I'm a little weird with how I react to sedation and how I don't react to sedation. So we'll just take this into account next time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There was definitely more pain than I expected after the retrieval, though. Yeah. Like, I, I got it's really not like, extreme, though. It's not too extreme. <laughs> <laughs> but I did have a uh, really, really bad uh, shoulder pain that I wasn't expecting. Yeah. Um, it was very hard to sleep. I could never get comfortable. That was kind of unexpected. I know it's weird because it can cause like a craft air bubble, or it can just be like your third pain, like it's just. Some of those fun little surprises. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so for for egg recipients, if you do have a donor that needs to travel, whether it's a flight away or even they have to drive five six hours, this is the reason why. If you watch this video, this is the reason why it's not something that you can expect. Eggs back, yes. That you can't <laughs> expect for your egg donor just to like let's go. Yeah. But having said that, there are some donors who just bounce up and leave. We know who you are if you're watching this, but there are some donors who literally just go shopping right after yeah. or just kind of get on a plane and we don't want to buy that whatsoever. Yeah, that's also why you need to support this. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes you really don't feel good yeah. afterwards. Yeah, like I'm just I'm very thankful that I didn't get denied. Were you feeling bloated as well? Yes, I was quite bloated. It was kind of, uh, my ovaries felt quite uh, tender to the touch oh, as well. Yeah. I couldn't um, sleep on my stomach. Depending on which that side I put my injection in, my that ovary would uh, cramp a little bit. So yeah, yeah. it's yeah. so yeah. weird when you like stand up and you can feel exactly where your ovaries are because you never wear it. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> like, you literally stand up and you're like, I can tell you exactly where my two ovaries are because I can feel them pulsing. <laughs> I think it's so good that today our talk is a lot more about like the real side. Like it's not just like, oh my god, it was all great. I mean, it was. Like, I feel so happy. <laughs> yeah, I'm very proud of 
like yeah I think I have so much more like this sounds so cheesy and so corny but like I have so much more respect for my body as this as a woman that I've not only like gone through this done the hormones done the procedure and now it's like especially being a known donor like having you know you, you get like gratitude from the IVs and stuff and it's like hey like I did that, like, you know, go me. It's like this little girl power moment that is just so special. Very empowering. It really is. Was it yeah. empowering for you too? Yeah, it was kind okay. of like, uh, I can do something that someone else really can, and mm-hmm. I got to do that for them. So. You kind of, it's like, mm. it's, you celebrate your body. Like, even when I, I was feeling, like, bloated and awful and, like, you know, not feeling cute, I was still, like, so celebrating my body because it, it removed me from focusing on what I looked like. And what my stomach looks like because you know I'm bloated, I'm bruised, I'm like, I like how you just talk down. Yeah, you're like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you're just like, oh. but like I was like no longer focused on what I look like, mm-hmm. it was what what I'm achieving. I was like, you know, I'm being an age donation for a couple to have children who don't really have children. Like, who cares if I'm bloated? Who cares what I look mm-hmm. like? like? This is so much more important than that. And at the end of the day, like, you know, maybe the procedure sucks, maybe the recovery sucks. That you help the is, it, is it a little bit like no pain no gain kind yeah. of thing? Yeah. Hmm. You help the family, or you, know, you help the single person have a child, and like at the end of the day, like, it's oh my God. It. Yeah, it's, it's so worth it. it. So, you mentioned earlier if you were doing an anonymous donation, would you have still felt like you were actually giving this gift to somebody? Or for you? Mm, probably not to the degree. You're more removed. Yeah, I'm just more removed. Yeah. yeah. But tell me, why do you think people want anonymous donors, and why do people want to become an anonymous donor? Not that we are disrespecting it whatsoever, just... Oh, I want there, to be anonymous at first, right? But why do people want that? If this is... Everything you're mm-hmm. saying is almost painting why known donation would be good. <laughs> I mean, known um, donation is great for me. I really like it. It was a good motivation. Mm-hmm. Just, you know, if there's a whole doctor, even just having a blood piece pressing on me, it's like, you know, they carried so much with the process. I and mean, we wanted to just them. Like, even just reading your profile, when I first got that profile, I was like, oh my gosh, like, this is all mm-hmm. they want in their life. You know, like, this is such a good goal. And it's like, what a privilege it is to be able to do this for them. Great. Yeah, so, I mean, I want to start off as a man in this. I was actually quite set on that until I just kind of like reevaluate my confirmation and, you know, kind of learn more about the process and the company, right? Um, yeah, I think it was anonymous. I don't know. Maybe you just feel like if that's what you're comfortable with, then that's what you're comfortable with. That's how I started off. You know, if you don't want to have to talk to you know, you then you don't talk to you. That's yeah. it. It's your place, you know. Oh, um, yeah. Perfect. Yeah. So you two totally just cracked me up. And, and um, we will sign off on that note. If you are ever interested in becoming an end donor, you can really be, I feel like both of you are really quite surprised with how they give an impact in a positive way yeah. it has been for you. It wasn't just like, here are my eggs and my mm-hmm. coin. And I just really enjoyed um, supporting both of you. And for recipients out there, whether you are somebody going through years of struggle and maybe, maybe you have a very uh, diminished or very reserved, or maybe, maybe you just are at a different age, or you don't have any eggs, uh, cool that have no eggs recently, you know, using an egg donor is really not um, the most awful thing possible. It's, there are people out there like you yeah, guys who can really um, help you grow that family. So I hope you enjoy this impromptu <laughs> expert event yeah. with Proud Fertility, Surrogacy and Education, a consultancy agency in Canada. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye.